to uh, we have to cover two demos one for the uh, vpcs and uh, one for the um, compute engine so let's do that okay uh, i'll delete this route because i don't have uh, existing uh, any uh, this one what you say your uh, firewalls so i will create a default route I'll just keep it as it is like fresh when we created the VPC, right? So my all the traffic, the internet traffic should go to default internet gateway. So I'm adding the route. So now. OK, now I have a I have a VPC which is in uh, so Asia South. So now I'm going to create a one more VPC. OK, VPC Europe. I'll create custom. I'll add a subnet. A region I'll select. Uh, Europe West for I think this is in Netherlands. One nine uh, ten dot one ninety six dot zero dot zero slash twenty four. OK. I'm not selecting anything this because I'm not using a, I know MCS uh, uh, projecting in this region. So let's keep it as it is. I'm not selecting any uh, rule as well. OK, I'll keep it as regional so that uh, this will be available only to the region Netherlands. OK, I'll create click create. OK, so at the same time I will go to duplicate. Now this will get created and uh, now we will go to. Compute engine. So why you do you created two VPC and all the like, can you put some lights on that one? Or like you yeah, because I wanted to yeah, I yeah. wanted to show you v, v, VPC pairing, etc. I wanted to oh, show you okay. how you will communicate from Mumbai to Netherlands. Okay, VPC okay. pairing. OK. Yeah, so create instance. It means I'm creating a VP. Uh, I'm creating a uh, virtual machine. So a VM Mumbai. OK, just for I'll select the region as uh, Mumbai South one. So this is the region. So see zone is nothing but this is keep it in mind. Zone OK, I can see zone right zone region and zone. The difference between is region and zone. This is very important to explain to me. Excuse me. So region. And zone. OK, region is you know, the, the presence of Google data center on the country. For example, India. India is a region. OK, so in India like you have a multiple region. For example, if you if you select this right. You see Delhi and Mumbai. These are the two regions. OK, so you have data center in Mumbai and in Delhi. OK, these are regions. OK, zone is nothing but like in that region you will have further data center. OK, so zone one, zone two, zone three. OK, in Mumbai, you may have a one data center in somewhere in the city or maybe the other one is somewhere, you know, uh, 10 or 20 kilometer from that first data center and the third one may be in maybe 50 kilometer, something like that. So why the zone is required? Because for example, you have a virtual machine, three three critical virtual machine, OK, three critical VMs. So you should, uh, uh, you know, make sure that these three are avail always available. OK, so these three are always Sorry, these three are hosting the same. Uh, what do you say service? For example, your storefront. Keep a storefront as an example. So you have a three storefront server. So for example, if you deploy three storefront server in this one region, what will happen? Even this, let's say that region goes down. For example, uh, I'm not familiar about the Mumbai places. So for example, Worli. So if they have the uh, 
uh, data center in that place if that for due to some reason uh, some natural disaster whatever whatsoever if that place is having some issues then all your three storefront server will be down so people won't be able to access anything okay so in that scenario what you have to do is when you deploying uh, such uh, workloads you have to distribute your workload between the zone so one you, you deploy one vm here storefront one deploy one vm in this and the other one is here so what will happen even though this zone is down this data center is goes down still you have two more data center available to serve the load even this also goes down you will still have one more so you guys are clear right between region and uh, zone yeah uh, just a question. Uh, so if you have multiple zones where you're deploying your VMs, the concept of sole tenant doesn't come into picture, right? Sole tenant uh, that I need to check. OK. OK. I, do, I, I think uh, that will come uh, like uh, see when you when you uh, see when you deploy your VPC, OK, you will you will select the region. Uh, you will select the uh, region, right? So for example. Uh, where is it? That I need to check. I will get back to you on that part. Yeah, we can okay, take that the last discussion. Yeah, you can ping in the uh, chat so that I don't remember. I don't forget the questions. OK, sure. so yeah so let's create the vm i am creating a vm in mumbai uh, i selected uh, the region and the uh, you know zone as uh, uh, south 1c okay so then i will i have to select the machine configure machine uh, details so i am selecting uh, two vcpu uh, vm with 8 gb ram okay so now the next option is i need to select the image okay so you need to click on here change select windows okay this is the public image you can bring your own image uh, from on prem or, and you can deploy your vms using snapshots or you can bring your disks here from on prem and there is multiple options are there you can create a custom image and you can select it yeah so for now for the lab purpose i am selecting windows uh, image which is, is publicly available and i am selecting windows server 2022 data center and here note you don't have Windows 10, OK? So if you wanted to deploy Windows 10, then you have to uh, uh, create a custom image or you have to bring the image from your on-prem. OK, there is a separate uh, video available from the Google site, how you can bring your image to Google Cloud, Windows 10 image, etc. OK, so by default, uh, this is not available. Only I believe I'm not sure in uh, AWS also we have Windows 10 because I uh, don't have visibility, but in Azure, yeah, we have Windows 10, all the things, but uh, in Google Cloud, you'll see only the Windows Server. OK, so I'll click select yes. OK, now uh, I'll, I will keep everything as it is. Uh, I'm not going to change uh, the default options. So here in the networking, I am selecting my VPC. OK, so if you see VDA VPC, right? By default, when I selected Mumbai, it picked the uh, you know Mumbai subnet, which is this one. Because I, when I selected the VDA via, via virtual machine, right? I selected Mumbai location. So by default, it will select that. If you have multiple subnets in the Mumbai, right? It will give you a drop down on which subnet you want to deploy. OK, additional disks that you can add it uh, later. So I will come into that disk part. So let's keep as it is the default disk security management here in the security. You can enable, uh, you know, secure boot. Uh, the tr uh, trusted platform module you can enable by default this is enabled so these all you know uh, enable the security to your virtual machines okay so if you want to uh, deep uh, on this you can learn what is uh, vtp that is uh, uh, trusted uh, platform module and uh, what is secure boot how it help you to do the, to secure the your vm etc okay so if you want if you have sole tenant you can select that so that it will be get deployed to that host itself okay so disks uh, here you can add additional disk I'll, I'll, uh, if you wanted to add uh, one more disk to uh, you know along with your boot disk you can add a disk here and uh, if you want to attach existing disk you can do that as well so all these things you can do it here okay so any questions here uh, in the in creating the vm no right it's very straight away and it's uh, you know simple as it is okay 
Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so I'm creating the VM here. So at the same time we are creating a VM in the Mumbai. So now I'm going to create a VM in Netherlands. Okay. Netherlands. I'll select zone, default zone. I'll select the memory, uh, like E2 series. So you can select different series here. Okay, like I'm selecting general purpose. If you want more compute, you can select compute optimized or memory optimized based on your load. You can use GPU as well, GPU based VMs. Okay. So for your VM uh, VDI workload, uh, two VCP and eight GB is enough. If it is a single session, multi session, you can go with the memory optimized or computer optimized. So boot disk, I will again, I'll select uh, Windows Server. OK, so. 20 H2. Then uh, networking. If you see by default, it will select the Netherlands. Uh, okay, VDI VPC Europe. So by default, it is selected the Europe uh, subnet. Okay, so this is uh, this is one more thing to notice. Okay, so by default, it will uh, add a public IP address. Okay, so if you don't want to add public IP address, you can click none so that it won't add a public IP address uh, to access the VM. OK, so in a production environment, choose none, but this is our lab. I'm selecting public IP address because I wanted to do RDP to that VM. Yeah, in a production, you will have site to site VPN or whatever with the on prem so you can you can reach your VMs using internal IP itself. OK, I'm creating the VM here. Uh, guys, uh, any any like it will take some time uh, to create the VM. So far, I saw some messages that some concepts are going above head. So if you have any doubts, don't hesitate. Please ask because uh, you know I'm trying to you know um, uh, cover from the scratch. Those who do not have any knowledge on cloud, also they should be able to understand. That is my agenda. So don't hesitate for anything. Stop me and uh, ask your uh, doubt and get clarity. Okay. Yes, Mahmoud. Yeah. Uh, Mahmoud, one question here. If we don't have any like jump box, anything infrastructure, and we are putting only um, private IPs, so any uh, we are not giving the any public IP. So how can we access these VMs? Any other way, something like that one, or we have to give only the public IP to access that one? See what you can do is if you are uh, if you are aware about Azure Bastion service, right? So similar service is also uh, available here. So you like you can open from HTML. Oh, let me put it in this way. So you have a VPC. You deployed your VM in this subnet subnet one. You have your on prem. Normally your on prem will have a VPN connectivity, so you can access this public IP address from your on-prem VM also okay directly because you have a site to site VPN. Now you are saying you don't have site to site VPN. OK, so either yeah. like you're sitting from your home PC, you want to access the only option now you have to assign the public IP address to this VM so that you can do RDP. OK, so at the same time you're failing insecure to access, you know, as an IP address. Uh, to this public uh, because if it is a production, nobody will assign a public IP address to the VM and they like it's not able to access directly. OK, to secure this, what you can do is you can create one more VPC in your like. Let's say this is as, as your DMZ network. OK, you can deploy jump box here. You can access public IP, you know, as into this jump box, which is in DMZ. Then you can internally connect to this. You got my point? Oh, yeah. But see in the production, nobody will use like this man. So because everybody will have on prem environment, isn't it? So no, for the lab environment, like I'm ah, lab environment, uh, lab environment, just as in public IP address. Why you are breaking okay, your no, head? Yeah. yeah, no, no, in because my laptop is officially like I cannot take the RDP and all this stuff. Hello, hello. 
Yeah, I'm audible, hear. guys. Yeah. We are able to hear. Hello. Yeah, we are able to hear. Can you confirm, uh, like, uh, I'm audible or uh, like he lost the connection? We are able to hear. You are audible. You are able. Okay, you are able to hear me, and you are able to see my screen as well, isn't it? Can you yeah. somebody yeah. can confirm, please? Okay, great. Yes, so let's do one thing. Let's quickly go through our VMs which we created. Okay, so then uh, probably we can demonstrate uh, all the things. Okay, so now let me let me go to my Mumbai VM. Okay. So now. Uh, guys, uh, like I need, I I I will set the local admin password for this VM, okay? Because I think we lost Mohammed, correct? Yeah, we lost. Yeah, we lost. Oh, no? my screen? No, you have to share the screen. Okay, can you see now? Is coming. Yes. coming. Okay, now I'm setting a local admin password for that VM. Okay, I'll just simply simply set. Uh, okay, I'll just copy this value and I'll put it somewhere in the notepad. Now I will go to the RDP and I will download the RDP file. This is nothing but a public IP address. So I'm going to connect. That's it. Nothing else. Yeah. This file is having a. Somebody can mute. Like, uh, can you can can you mute the mic, please? It is getting echoed. Yeah. OK. So now I'm entering the password. I'm able to connect the VM from my machine because you remember I uh, added the firewall rules here, right? If I go to my. VPC. Excuse me. You can see this uh, I allowed 10.109.177.188.58 to the complete VPC. OK, VDA VPC. That is why I'm able to access uh, my VM. So now I'm logging. Yeah, this is the VM I connected, which is host, which is in Mumbai. OK, so if I go to the IP address. Uh, guys, uh, please mute your uh, mic. OK, uh, let's uh, talk only when we discuss the questions or if you have any questions, you can raise because otherwise. We'll have a noise in the back end. OK, so this is. This is the VM which is having 10 125 0.0.125.0.2, which is in Mumbai. OK, so now I have one more VM. If I go here. This is. Uh, VM which is hosted in the uh, Netherlands. OK, so I'll go to the Netherlands VM. I'll go to reset the password. I'll copy this value and I will uh, put it somewhere in the notepad. Then I will download RDP file. See, did you notice I'm not able to do RDP? Why? Because I did not. I allowed RDP to only to Mumbai VPC. I did not allow RDP to the Netherlands VPC. You guys got my point, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, okay. Here, yeah, see. I, I, yeah. Are you are you able to? I mean, I don't know whether it's for me or everyone is not able to see your screen because I'm seeing a black screen. No, the screen share is working fine. We're I able think to you can now. rejoin. You can disconnect and you can yeah. rejoin. 
Okay. Okay. So guys, now I have to allow RDP the same rule to my Netherlands VPC. Okay. So let's create it. RDP from Netherlands. Okay. So network I'm selecting Europe. That is my Netherlands network and incoming ingress. Okay. I'm selecting allow target. I'm selecting all the VMs which is in the Netherlands uh, network. Source IP. Source IP is this one. My a laptop IP address. OK. I will click this and I will select protocol. 3389 TCP 3389. OK, now I'm creating it. So after creating this, this will allow me to uh, access my VM. Uh, the Netherlands VM. OK, so successfully created. I have the file here. I am trying to reconnect again. Uh, one quick question. Amma. Yeah, see Can't now once one second, one second. Let me finish this. So now it is asking me to enter the password because now the reachability is there. OK, now I'm able to connect to my Netherlands. So guys, the firewall concept is clear, right? With the demo. Yes, uh, yes. one quick question here. Yes. Uh, can't we directly add uh, VPC of Europe also uh, to the first rule itself? Here, the first rule. Yeah. No, no. Uh, can't cannot. we add multiple? VPC? Okay. No, no. Because see, we you are defining firewall rules based on the VPC. You can add multiple subnets in the same VPC, but you cannot tag the particular rule to multiple VPCs. You got my point? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because when you create a firewall rule, you can see network, right? Either you can, it is allowing you to select only one VPC, either Europe or VPC. It won't allow you to select multiple VPCs. You got my point? Right, right, right. I am clear. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay now VPC, we have to create the firewall for if we want to open the ports, correct? Yes, you should maintain a, a firewall policy for mm -hmm. each VPCs. Got it. OK, yeah. So now we have a visibility. So now we have a Netherlands VM here. So let me check the IP address of the Netherlands VM. Yeah, so now IP config. OK, so now we have the IP address that is 10.196.0.0.0.2, which is in Netherlands. So I'm trying to ping from Mumbai. OK. Ping. 192. What is that? 192. Yeah. 10.192. Yes. Yeah. OK, so now I'm trying to ping. It is not pinging. OK, so why? Because it is a separate geographic location. There is no connectivity. That is the reason. Yeah, now we are going to do a VNet peering. To uh, I know uh, connect uh, two VPCs together. So for that we have to go to VPC network. Create a VPC peering continue. Peering. From Mumbai to. Mumbai to Netherlands. OK. So you have to select your Mumbai network first. It is asking peer VPC. Do you want to connect to the VPC which is in the same project or different project? So in this case, I'm having it in the same project. So if you have in a different project, it will ask you to select the projects and the project ID. As I told you, right? Project ID. For example, here this is my different project. OK, VDI project is a separate project, so I want to connect to VDI project. So then I have to copy this project ID. And I need to put it here. OK, since we are in the same project. I am selecting same, uh, you know, GCP project itself. It will ask where to connect. I want to connect to Europe VPC. OK, keep the uh, rest setting as it is. This is related to the routing uh, uh, advertisement that is not required at this moment. So just click create. OK. Now we have created peering from Mumbai to Netherlands. So we need to create another peering from Netherlands to Mumbai. OK, so let it finish and see now you can see inactive right here because one way peering is done. 
So other way pairing is not yet completed. So let's do one thing. Uh, before we create uh, the uh, before we create the other pairing, uh, can we just try pinging from one one location to other? No, it is not possible. Let me uh, let me show you. Yeah. Okay, so it is not pinging either. Even if I create the even if I create the pairing also, it won't ping. Uh, I want an answer from you guys. Why? Okay, so let me show you that. One second. Like hold on. Yeah, one second. Hold on. Mumbai. So I'm now creating a pairing from Netherlands to Mumbai. So I'll select the Europe and then I'll select in this project and I wanted to make to Mumbai. OK, so I'll create. So. OK, now see right it is in an active state. OK, so now we, our pairing is completed. So let's do one thing. Let's do the pinging. OK, so this is my Mumbai uh, VM. I am pinging to the Netherlands. Still it is not pinging. Let's ping from Netherlands to Mumbai. OK, so I'm going to the Netherlands uh, VM and I'm pinging. So this is not pinging. Can you give me the answer why it is not pinging? ICMP is not open. ICMP is not enabled. Exactly, okay. correct. So we have to go to the firewall, create a firewall rule, say ICMP Mumbai. OK, then I'll select my network. That is my VDA network, Mumbai network. Incoming traffic allow to any instance in this network. Select the source. Source is where my Netherlands IP address. OK. 10.196.0. What is the IP address? That is 10.196.1.0. So I want to allow from this IP address the ICMP packets. Okay. So for example, I'm um, uh, uh, okay. So I'm allowing everything. Okay. Not only ICMP, just for the sake. So if you want to allow ICMP, just you can you can uh, you know type other protocol and type here it as ICMP. So it will only allow ICMP. I wanted to show some other uh, you know RDP also. So I'll select all. So now it will allow all the traffic from Netherlands to your Mumbai. Mm. OK. So now we need to define the similar to our Netherlands also. OK, now I'm going to create another one saying that ICMP Netherlands. OK, so here network I'm selecting Europe and ingress incoming traffic allow to all the instance. Then source IP is my Mumbai IP address. So now everything from Mumbai, it will hit, uh, you know, it will allow. OK, so I'll select as allow and create. So now if I if the first uh, firewall policy is deployed, then I should be able to ping now. See. This is the beauty. Now the traffic is completely going from the Google backbone network. OK, so now if I go to my Netherlands. I should be able to ping. To Mumbai VM VM OK, so now from Netherlands I can go to MSTSC. I can even take remote also 10 125.0.2. I can take. 10 125. Ah, OK, you cannot take because uh, you know this machine is not in domain. This is using its own uh, local uh, uh, machine accounts, right? So we'll uh, see this uh, demo once we'll take the VM in domain, etc. Uh, one second, hold on. Oh, that is not the case. We are in uh, Mumbai, right? So, what is the IP we are trying? Yeah, see now I'm able to access my Mumbai IP, sorry, Netherlands uh, VM from my Mumbai machine using the internal IP address, not the public one. This is because of the peering. So guys, uh, 
with this concept you should be able to differentiate you know you should be able to clearly understand how the firewall works how the peering works any questions here any doubts any questions here unclear mahmud okay now i'll come to one more point so now as i told you right the routing table will play a big role so now as i told you you'll have a default route which is going to internet 0.0, .0. so now you may have a question if i wanted to reach uh, uh, this one right uh, netherland i should add that netherland uh, subnet to the routing table isn't it i did not add that how still i am able to reach netherland so the answer for that is whenever you create any vpn peering right the google cloud will automatically add the routes okay you can see the routes here yeah yeah, this is automatically added. This it is saying that any traffic that that is 10.196.0.0, it should go using the peering. You got my point. Similarly, it is added to the Mumbai also. See, this is added in your Europe. So in Europe network, it is added a route saying that any traffic which is going to 10.125.0.0, it should go to your uh, this one. What you say? Uh, your uh, VPN peering tunnel. OK, it will go through VPN and you can see priority is zero. So it means if any other, uh, uh, you know, default route, it will overwrite because it is with the priority zero and it will take precedence. OK, so you're clear, right? So when you do peering, how the uh, routing happens and uh, how the firewall comes in picture and uh, how you are allowing the traffic, etc. Are you clear, guys? Any doubt here? Any questions here? Thank you. Guys, so uh, I need your answers. Are you guys clear or any any doubt you have? Yeah, yes. clear a moment. We are clear. OK, we are clear. great, great. OK, so now we have covered, uh, you know, how to create virtual machines and uh, how to create a virtual network and how to create firewalls, how to create a routes and uh, what else? Uh, OK, anything we need to cover it in the network for the OK. I'm not going to cover, uh, you know, shared VPC creation, etc, because uh, um, it is very simple. So and we don't have enough time also for that. Google Cloud, uh, this is also I covered why it is required routes, firewalls, IP address, everything we covered here. OK, compute engine also I covered how to create VMs and uh, uh, I wanted to give you some, uh, you know, tips on the compute engine as well. OK. So if you go to compute engine. OK, so let's go to compute engine. Uh, if you want to, let's say you have selected this VM, right, which is 2 VCP and 8 GB RAM. OK, at some point you change, you thinking that this is not performing well, so you can change any time. OK, so first for that you have to shut down your VMs. So I have my compute engineer. I'm going to the different project because the, this VMs is already on. So to change the size, you have to turn off the VM first. OK, so here already I'm having the you know turned off VM. So you just open the turned off VM first. OK, then uh, go to edit. Yeah, and then go to the. Uh, yeah, here you can change. You can select the family and uh, if you don't want to change family, you want to change only the size, select the size. Uh, for, for now it is 2 GB 2 CPU and you can select whatever the required one and just click save. That's it. OK, it will change the VM size. OK, similarly when you creating a VM, right? So for example, always do a best practice. For example, uh, if you are creating a VM. There is an option here. Uh, confidential. OK, so let's say. I'm creating in Mumbai. General purpose. Uh, Windows server. Whatever it is. OK, so here in networking and management and security. OK, networking or in management, I believe. Yeah, enable deletion protection. So when you enable this, right? 
you are not able, you know, it will avoid, you know, automatic, you know, accidental deletion of VMs. So you cannot uh, delete the VMs. It will grade out. OK, so when you uh, click this uh, option, right? Uh, delete option. You won't see this delete option when you enable the accidental delete checkbox. OK, so always remember when you if you are deploying your cloud connector, etc. Right, make sure that you enable this one. So if you wanted to delete this VM later stage, then you have to go to the properties and then remove the check mark. OK, this is similar to Azure uh, resource lock. OK. So this is related to the VM and uh, how we are creating the VMs uh, and how to protect the instance and how to delete the delete the VMs. As I showed you, it's very simple. Click there and uh, uh, you know you can click here and you can delete it. OK, so it will delete the disk as well as network everything. It is not like Azure in earlier Azure. If you delete the VM, it will only delete the VM. Still you will have a network interface. You will have a disk. Still you are paying for that. But now Azure also brought a feature that you can delete when you VM you can delete, right? It will delete all the resources along with it as well. Guys, uh, any questions?